would a relational God want us to live in anxiousness? You know, we know that being anxious is to be in a state of fear and worry. Would a relational God want us to be anxious? And, you know, would being anxious help us grow in a vibrant and vital relationship with Him? And as importantly, if not, how do we not be anxious? Those are the questions we're going to explore in this video. So hang on. Here we go. Now, my name is Charles. Charles Yerkes. Thank you for joining me. So, right away, these two questions, you know, would a loving God want us to be full of fear and worry? And would that help us develop a vital relationship with Him, being anxious, that is? You know, right, right away, the common sense answer, the one that just jumps out at me, is a resounding no. He would not. And that comes from two things. First, it comes from knowing that wanting somebody to be fearful, wanting somebody to worry, well, that's just abusive. That's not loving. And God is loving. Second, it comes from knowing that worry tends to shift the focus from a healthy relationship and solely onto myself. It makes us focus on the I. You know, no matter what the fear is, we become self-concerned. You know, if it's a, a how, you know, question like how will I you know, pay the bills? How will I put food on the table? It, it, it doesn't matter what the fear is, the shift is to the I. You know, and it could be a what if type of fear. It could be, you know, what if I said the wrong thing? What if I did the wrong thing? Will they still like me? Will that person still love me if I've done something wrong? It's the if I. See, and because worry focuses the attention on ourselves, on the I, and not upon the other person, it actively stops and blunts a vibrant relationship from taking place. And as God is loving and is about healthy relationships, the answer has to be no. He does not want us to be anxious. Now, a common sense uh, answer to questions about God are really meaningless if they're not supported by the Bible. And in the Bible, God repeatedly, repeatedly tells His people, do not fear. Do not be anxious. Don't worry. And one of my favorite passages about this comes from Philippians, the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verses 5 through 8, which starts very interestingly, by the way, with the exact words, do not be anxious about anything. Now, to sum up this passage, it says, do not be anxious. Talk to God about it with gratitude in your heart. And the peace of God will guard you. The peace of God will guard you. So don't worry. And it continues to say, you know, don't worry. But instead of that, fill your mind with everything that is pure, honorable, trustworthy, excellent, praiseworthy, noble. Fill your mind with these things. And don't worry. Now, one of the things that... that, that also strikes me from this passage is that there are no qualifications given. Paul does not list any times in which it would be okay to be anxious. You know, he does not say, you know, do not be anxious unless, you know, the rent is late and, and you don't have the money to pay it. Unless there's no food in the house and there's no money to go get some. Unless you're living in a political situation which is treacherous, threatening, full of corruption, and there's really no end in sight to it. There's nothing that you can do to make it better. Or even, or even, do not be anxious unless you really want to develop this relationship with Christ and so you truly don't want to get anything wrong, right? For then, you know, anxiety would be okay because it would help you choose the right things to do, right? <laughs> no. He doesn't say any of that. He says, do not be anxious 
about anything. Anything. And, you know, about anything means just that. About anything. So, do not be anxious. All right, you may ask. We're told not to be anxious. How do I do this? You know, for it is one thing to be told not to be anxious, and it's quite a different thing entirely to have that be enacted in your life. Because fear is very real. And it is here. You know, the Bible tells us uh, something very interesting about this. It says, perfect love casts out fear. So it would seem that, you know, love is part of the solution. Now, before you go and say, well, that's all well and good, but that does me no good because my love isn't perfect. I'm just a human being, so my love can't cast out any fear. And, and you would be right. Human love can't. But this isn't talking about human love. It's talking about God's love. As God love fills you, it will drive out fear. Okay, you may say. Granted. But how do I do that? How do I let God's love fill me to the point where it casts out the fear? Because right now I've got it and it's not going anywhere. Peter offers an explanation of how this is done. He says, humble yourselves under God's hand and cast your anxiety upon him because he cares about you. Humble yourself and cast your cares upon God. Now, the Psalms also opens this up and adds color to it, and it's very interesting. For example, you know, one psalmist, when talking to God, says, When my fear is great, I will trust you. I trust God, therefore I will not be afraid. Okay, you may ask, that's all well and good, but how can I trust God that much? For it is readily apparent that love casting out the fear does now involve trusting God. So how is that done? Well, you know, other videos that I've made here have kind of talked around this specific topic, and I'll link to those in the description box below. But I think a good place to begin is just simply take Philippians at its word. Fill our minds with things that are noble, honorable, pure and excellent. And, and the connection with Psalms here gets even more interesting when we look at Psalms 1. Because Psalms 1 does a very excellent job in, in telling us what some of these holy and pure things actually are. It says, uh, Psalms 1, that in order to be happy, and would we agree that being happy might include being anxiety-free? It says, in order to be happy, a man must think about Christ and his teachings day and night. Night and day, day and night. Which is to say, to think about God, his teachings, and his love so much that they become an integral part of who we are. Then we will become anxiety free. Now another way to say that is to say that we will be anxiety free if we live from the first two great commandments, which that is, we will be anxiety free if we love God first with our entire being. And then if we live from loving our neighbor as ourselves. Which, you know, these two commands are excellent explanations of what it means to uh, be abiding in Christ and his love. And Jesus says that if we abide in him and his love, his joy will be placed into us and our joy will be complete. So here in Psalms 1, and the two great commands, and abiding in Christ's love, these things make up a large part of what it means to focus and think about all that is pure, holy, right, praiseworthy. So, you know, back to our question. Back to our original question. Would God 
want us to be anxious. You know, I, I think in, in, in light of, of all that we've just talked about, a more interesting question would be this. In order to draw near to God, in order to learn to trust Him, and so let His love fill us and drive out anxiety, what's good, holy, bright, pure, excellent, and praiseworthy things can we fill our minds with now? You know, for we truly become whatever it is we fill our minds with. And Jesus says, feel free to ask him. He says, for help in doing this. He says, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek for it, and you will find it. Knock, and the door will be opened. See, he wants to help you learn how to be anxiety-free if you truly want to be free. Now, that is the rub. You must truly want to be free. See, he wants to help you. He wants to show you what uh, pure thoughts, what excellent things, what honorable things, what praiseworthy things to think about are. He wants you to be anxiety free if you truly want to be free. Now that means if you choose to pursue an active, vital, and vibrant relationship with him. That is your part. If you choose to pursue an active relationship with Him, then His love can fill you and drive out the anxiety. Now, a couple things to remember. First, this is going to take some time. All healthy, vibrant relationships take time to build. There are no shortcuts. It takes time. But building a healthy and vibrant relationship is the key to being anxiety-free. And the second thing to remember is that anxiety-free is not concern-free. There's a big difference between those two. And the difference between those, well, that'll make a good topic for another day. But until then, what do you think? What are your ideas about living an anxiety-free life? Please tell me in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Now also, in the description box below, I'm going to list not only those videos I mentioned earlier, but I'm going to list all the passages that I referred to in this video, and I'm going to list them in order. And then I'm going to list several other passages about this topic that I think you're also going to find interesting. Please check them out. Check out on me. Make sure I'm in the ballpark. I'm not out in the left field someplace. Then, you know, if you want to learn more about Christ, I'm also going to learn, um, I'm going to add some links. Uh, resource links. First, to, to the resource page of my website, simplenotshallow.com, a site dedicated to helping you learn more about Christ and His love and helping you grow in that relationship. And then I'm going to list two uh, resource links uh, for books. They're going to be The Attributes of God, Volume 1, and Volume 2 by A.W. Tozer. Now, Tozer does an amazing job of explaining the attributes of God and how they all work together and how they characterize who God is so you can learn more about who God is. And this will help you grow in your relationship with Him, help you to trust Him a little bit more. Now, complete transparency, these uh, links are Amazon affiliate links, meaning that if you choose to use them to get your resources, I will get a little something from Amazon for your having done so. At no additional cost to you. It costs you nothing to use these links. It just helps me out a little bit if you do. Thank you. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please click the like and the subscribe buttons. And once you click that subscribe button, make sure to tag that little gray bell icon. It tells YouTube that you want to be notified each time a new video is posted. Thank you. And I'll talk with you next time.